photos to the day. What day? The day that Rick Weber would let the cardiac wing take a back seat to a desk full of papers and a few heart operations that I'm sure aren't very important. Casey, why do you insist on putting anyone down without examining any facts before you open your mouth? What are the facts, Monica? That every doctor who worked in isolation went through hell. And just because the quarantine is lifted and the hospital's open again doesn't mean the tension is lifted, nor the incredible exhaustion. Come on, Monica. Come on, now you've made the point. Well, if you are an example of just how tense and exhausted the epidemic team still is, I'd say you made your point when I saw you getting on the elevator going home to Allen, and you've been making the same point ever since. And if you'll excuse me now, I'm going to my office to get some work done. Monica, I'm sure that mother will understand if you still like to get away from... No. No. I'll... Look, I will be fine once I get back into the routine and under seat. You want to ride up with me? No, uh, I have to check out something first. Okay. You call me if you need me, all right? Yeah. Uh, Jesse? Oh, yes, please. After Steve made the announcement about the quarantine being lifted, uh, Dr. Lombard wanted people on five to design some special health department sheet. Oh, well, that rule is still in effect, Monica. Anybody going up and down uh, has to sign in and out on the timesheet. Well, I'm afraid I didn't sign out when I left. But you're okay, you're okay. Uh, Gail covered it for you. She came down and I signed you both up. Oh, uh, could I see, uh, those records? Uh, I'd like to take a look at them. Well, the original is downtown at the health department office, but there is a duplicate, I think, in Steve's office. Hmm. You know if Gail's in the hospital yet? Should be in her office. She came in early to see Lee. You want me to get her for you? No, no, Jesse. Uh, I'll. I have to pass her office anyway. I'll take more chances. Okay. Have a good day. You too. Oh, Monica, listen to God. If you do go back up to five, please remember to sign in and out. Hmm? Jesse, what am I going to tell Dr. Gonzalez about Dr. Weber? I promised that I'd get right back to him. I have to. Well, you heard what Rick said. She may be in later. Jesse, come on, he's going to think I didn't even check if I give him an answer like that. Especially about somebody like Dr. Weber, who's so on time and responsible all the time. Well, don't worry about any of that. Just tell him what you know, okay? And if anybody wants me, I'll be in Steve's office, because I have to see Dan. Give him the sign-out sheets from yesterday, so I can forward them to Dr. Lundborn. I'll take care of things here while you're gone. Will you please call Dr. Gonzalez, Bobby? I'm down a little since I spoke to you yesterday on the phone, you know. You sounded frantic. And I still am. Well, I uh, can't let it show. First priority is to get my life back in order, if, if that's too possible. Oh, well, you're back in the hospital in cardiology again. That's a step in a direction towards normalcy, isn't it? Look, okay, Gail, I know you meant well, and I'm not blaming you. But you never should have sent Rick after me when I ran out of here the other night. Monica, I had no choice. You were hysterical. You wouldn't listen to a word I said. And when I saw Rick down in an emergency, I asked him to follow you and try to put some common sense in your head. I said, Gail, I'm not blaming you. Well, apparently you got home all right. Yeah, six hours later. What did you just say? I said six hours later, when the sun was coming up, that's why I didn't want you to tell anyone about when you signed me out. Was uh, Rick with you all that time? Yeah. You're right. I was hysterical. In fact, I was a lot more hysterical than I thought I was. So Rick was uh, driving me home. We, we stopped along the harbor. And I jumped out of the car, I ran down to the water, and and he followed me, he calmed me down, and then we went into this little fishing shack, or, and he lit a fire so I could, I could get my clothes dry. I know what you're thinking, but nothing happened. I don't, I don't, I don't sound very convincing because quite frankly, I don't even believe it. But nothing happened. 
I can't believe it, Monica. I just wonder what, why you all this secrecy about what time you left the hospital if you have nothing to hide. Oh, Gail, come on. I, I told Alan that Rick and I spent six hours down at the beach in some shack. He would be so furious, he would... Well, he would never believe I didn't sleep with him. Well, I think you are underestimating your husband. No, I'm not. No, because yesterday, Gail, he told me that while Rick and I were in quarantine, his jealousies were stronger than ever before, and he had to do everything in his power to control them. But obviously he did. And so did you. I mean, to spend all that time with Rick alone and let nothing happen. Monica, don't you see? I mean, no matter what you think, Alan is still the center of your life. You love him. Nothing's changed. I love Alan with all my heart, yes, Gail. But everything has changed. My life is never going to be the same again. Ever. Monica. Hi. Uh, are you busy? Ah, uh, the usual. If you have a minute, I think there's some things we should talk about. Oh, what did you want to talk about? About us. The awkwardness between us, like when we met in the lobby this morning. Well, I think we should talk about it, because it's not when I just disappeared. All right. She brought me back to my car yesterday morning. Is that what you wanted to talk about? No, I would like to talk about what we felt that night that can ruin both our lives if we let it. And to top it all off, he wanted to make love with her very, very much. Now, he told me that. I'm not making that up. Those are his words. But he didn't. Maybe he should have. Maybe it would have been better if he had. Maybe that way he, he could have found out that, that she was out of his system once and for all. This way, wanting her. And not having her is only going to cause him to want her all the more. Honey, don't you think you are blowing this whole thing way up out of proportion? No, I don't. I know that recently, even, I, I had a bad habit of overreacting to things I'm not this time I am not they're going to be working together very closely every day and if, if that attraction is still there it's just going to get stronger and I will not be used as a substitute for his desire for another woman I just won't Leslie it is not going to happen what makes you so sure because I figured it out Look, this is the way I look at it. Rick and Monica were very exhausted the night that the quarantine was lifted, right? We don't know what happened up in isolation. They weren't getting any sleep. Their nerves were tight like a drum. And then all of a sudden, the pressure was lifted. And they went crazy. I mean, it was just a thing of the moment. Honey, you know what I mean. I hear what you're saying. Maybe that's a question only Rick can answer, if it really was a thing of the moment, as you say, or, or if he really does still feel the same way about her. And he, he's going to have to answer that question, Colleen, before we can start to look for solutions or for a life together. is how we deal with it from here on in and we cannot let it interfere with our working relationship at this hospital you know what my first impulse was what get Alan to move away from Fort Charles so I wouldn't have to face you so I wouldn't have to acknowledge the uh, feelings that we realized are still there running away doesn't make much sense either did to me 
However, I couldn't very well uh, even ask Alan without him wanting to know my reasons for it, so... Of course, I couldn't tell them. I couldn't tell him what they are. Monica, the only answer is to face up to it. We have a rather strong physical attraction for each other. But we have to go on with our lives in spite of that. And we have to accept the fact that it's there and control it. Easier said than done. I didn't say it would be easy, but we have to do something about it or it could destroy the things that mean the most to us. I will never let anything, anything at all, destroy my marriage to Alan. I love Leslie. I want that marriage more than anything else. My wanting you doesn't change that. Rick, I feel so dishonest. Yes, I love Alan. I can't tell him that I spent the night with you, that I wanted you to make love to me, and I still do. Well, I know how honest you are. It's got to be a lot worse for, for you facing Leslie. I don't have that problem, Monica. Leslie already knows the whole story. What? She was waiting up for me when I came home the other morning. I told her that I'd spent the night with you. And that I wanted to make love to you very much. It means that he trusted you enough to let you know what his feelings were, knowing that you would understand them and that you could go right on with your marriage. Unfortunately, understanding and accepting are not the same thing. Oh, Leslie. If every marriage broke up because a guy looked at another woman, there wouldn't be any marriages left. Oh, no, Colleen, this is a very, very different story. And it's a very old story. They were lovers. They had a very strong chemistry, which obviously never ended. But it is ended now. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. Rick and Monica spent the night together and nothing happened. Rick does not love Monica. Rick does not want to marry her. He does not want to share his life with her. If he did, he would have done it years ago when they first had that affair when you told me about that. Rick loves you, Leslie. I've learned something in working with Dr. Casola, that emotions are not necessarily always logical. The important thing is, is to acknowledge them and to express them. And I feel hurt and angry. And I will not lie in bed with him and let him make love to me and know that he would rather be making love to Monica. Okay, then so what are you going to do? I don't know. That's something new for me, too, because I'm the one who always had to feel that, that she knew the answer for things. Well, I just don't right now. That's it. I don't. That's the way things are. I thought if I could, if I could get away from him, I'd be able to sort things out, but I still don't know anything except that I'm hurt and that it's no easier to deal with today than it was yesterday. Oh, honey, listen. You can stay here as long as you want to. You know that. Yes, I do. But I can't. I have to go back and face the situation, which is that Rick wants Monica very much. Oh. Now then, what the hell am I going to do to deal with that? What did she say, Rick? And how did she react? She was shocked. Hurt. Angry. How are you dealing with it? We're not, because she's run off someplace. Where? I don't know. She locked herself in her room. She wouldn't come out. She did not want to discuss it. I went downstairs and I fell asleep on the couch. Laura woke me up to tell me that she had just seen her mother drive off in the car with a suitcase. Why, you haven't heard from her since? Well, she called once yesterday to let us know that she was all right still wouldn't discuss it, and she refused to tell me where she was. I'm sorry, Rick. I am too, but at least it's out in the open now. And when Leslie is ready, we'll face it. Well, I know Alan couldn't face it. He'd never be able to cope with it. Aren't you being a little hard on his ability to understand and forget? No. No, not in this area, Rick, because I know Alan very well. And he has fought with this jealousy of his over 
over what you and I once were to each other. He could never believe, nor would he ever forgive me if he found out what happened that night. Rick, he would never believe we didn't sleep together. It would destroy our marriage if he ever finds this out. I hope it doesn't destroy mine. I guess I'll just have to wait until Leslie comes home.